Rögtön át is adnám a, a Szolgyon Súkornak, aki bemutatja magát, a nemzetközi szervezetet. Ugyan én azt mondtam, hogy lehet kérdéseket feltenni, de azért azt javasolnám, hogy hát ehhez most ne tegyünk fel kérdéseket, tehát hogy a szervezet milyen és hogyan működik, hanem majd, amikor tényleg a tényleges linszemléletről lesz szó, és tényleg arról lesz szó, hogy a, a folyamatokban mit lehet és mit kell belelátni, akkor, akkor gyűjtsék a muníciót. Akkor sok szeretettel köszöntjük itt a színpadon John Súkorat. Good morning. Sorry, to you have to switch gears, one language to another. Uh, so some people uh, have earphones, I think. Oh, my, my translator, my interpreter friends will be hurt if they don't get to do their work. Almost everyone is going to try to listen to my, uh, my English. That's good. Unfortunately, I have only learned uh, two words of uh, Hungarian. And my friend, Hungarian friends have urged me not to even try those two this morning. <laughs> so, uh, but before I leave, I'll try to do better. Uh, this is my first visit to Hungary. It's been a wonderful experience. Um, I look forward to uh, many return visits and learning more. Uh, I have with me my, uh, my, my colleagues at the Lean Enterprise Institute Hungary prepared this uh, primer for me so I could uh, know at least something about your country. So I wouldn't embarrass myself too much. I, I, so I've been studying this and learning. And I have learned already that you have many wonderful wines here in, uh, in, uh, in Hungary. And that's uh, mainly a good thing, but not totally a good thing. You have to be careful. Um, so again, it, it's, it's, it's a great pleasure to be here representing the Lean Enterprise Institute uh, in the USA. That's our logo here with the, uh, the, 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 the leaper. We call that a leaper. And um, 15 years ago, the, uh, when the Institute was founded, um, the, the founders, I was not a part of the Institute at that time. I was a colleague. Uh, I worked with the Institute. I only joined a year and a half ago. But there was much thought of what kind of Institute to make, because our goal was to change the world. And uh, 15 years later, we're still trying to change the world. Uh, one, one, one country, uh, one company, uh, one person at a time. And this logo indicates someone taking a leap, because uh, a new way of thinking uh, is indeed uh, a, a leap. It's a personal journey, not just something that's a matter of business, dollars and cents. It's a personal journey as well. So that's what that logo uh, symbolizes. Um, and the other then, this one uh, shows the leaper uh, 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 throughout the world with the globe behind, because we now have a, glo a global network uh, which I'll introduce to us uh, to you briefly. Uh, we are a not-for-profit education and research institute based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, the institute here is also a not-for-profit. Uh, we are now a total of uh, 18 different institutes around the world. Uh, I am the CEO. Uh, we have just 14 full-time employees, so we're very small. Um, but we have a large list of uh, faculty who teach courses, and a lot of different associates, both in the United States uh, and around the world. Founded in 1997 uh, by Dr. James Womack, uh, who was a principal scientist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. Uh, and he was the chief scientist of a very famous study, study back in the 1980s, which I'll refer to a little bit more in, in just a moment. But this is the study that introduced uh, lean production, uh, lean thinking to the world, and that also launched uh, our, our institute. And uh, although there are only 14 of us uh, inside LEI, um, we have 225,000 members around the world. So we're small, but uh, big as well, in a, in a way. So uh, we en enjoy interacting with uh, everyone around the world. So we do different things. I'll introduce some of those to you here. Uh, first of all, we do have education, like public and in-house workshops. We have about 30 or 40 different workshops that we offer uh, about different aspects of, 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 of business and, and change. Um, we plan to have a couple of those uh, available uh, here, I think, very, very, very soon as well. Um, one of the most substantial things we do is we have a large website, uh, lean.org, L-E-A-N.org. And a lot of members and a lot of content there. So if you ever go there and just click around, you'll find an amazing amount of content. Uh, there are things there that I haven't seen 
you, I think it would take a very long time to try to see everything that's available there. Um, and we do coaching. We provide uh, coaching for uh, different for individuals and organizations uh, of various kinds. And I think we're going to talk a little bit more about coaching today. Uh, I think coaching is the way, such a helpful way for people to learn. And I think we'll see this afternoon that uh, the piece of paper is not the point. Uh, it's how we can help us be good coaches. That's the only purpose of the paper. So uh, publications, we do uh, have two that we're introducing here today. Two of my favorites, not because I wrote them, because they're uh, two, two important books, I hope. Uh, we have a number of books that will be uh, also available in Hungary, and over the course of the coming years, we hope to make many of those available uh, in your language as well. And we do a lot of industry networking, things like this, because we believe that networking, collaborative learning is a great way for people to learn. Coaching as, as an intense way for people to improve their skills and change, but also collaborative, people get together. You find other individuals uh, who, intent, who need to learn the same things, who want to learn the same things. I'm sure here today you'll find others who are facing very similar problems to yours, and hopefully you will be passing out, out business cards getting to know each other, and you can contact each other going forward. I think this networking is an important aspect of what we all do. Um, and then, this kind of flies in because we're entering the digital world. Uh, I, I recently discovered tweeting. Anyone here ever tweet? Yep. Yes? Someone said yes. Any hands? Not many tweeters here, a few. I've never tweeted, but I recently read some tweets. It's actually very interesting. So I want to look into that more. But we are making more of our books available uh, digitally, digital media now as well. Uh, we have a couple available uh, through download. And we do a lot of this social networking stuff. So, so the 14 full-time staff I mentioned, some of those are, are, are young people who are very uh, proficient in the social networking world. That would not be me, but uh, they are. Um, so this shows our network, 18 of us now. And the most recent uh, is the one just now being established uh, here in Hungary. Uh, the first was in the United States, uh, established in Cambridge in, in 1997. Shortly after that, uh, there are two institutes formed right away uh, in the UK, uh, the Lean Enterprise Academy in the UK, founded by Dan Jones, and the Lean Institute Brazil. And there was no necessarily uh, intention in the beginning of creating a global network. But then steadily, people started raising their hands, saying, well, our, our country needs this as well. We want to do this in our country as well. So steadily, uh, the, the network has grown now to uh, 18 different members. You can see, the, uh, you can see it here on the map. We've, we are now covering the world uh, pretty well. And there may be a couple more coming in the next uh, couple of years, we think. So first of all, uh, whether it's the piece of paper uh, or lean thinking itself, it's something that, that, that I think we always have to talk about a little bit in the very beginning. So I don't know, I think in Hungarian you just use the word, English word lean, yes? Uh, probably a good idea. Um, in English, it's actually somewhat of a problematic word. Um, what happened is back in the 1980s uh, at MIT, there was a very famous study I mentioned earlier. It was famously uh, billed as five years and five million dollars, which at that time was a lot of money to spend on this kind of research where the uh, researchers visited every automobile assembly plant in the world that they could get into. There were some, actually, this was back in the 1980s, so there were some they could not get into uh, in, in, in Russia, for example. But they went into about 130 or 140 different assembly plants around the world. As they went through those plants, they started finding something that was quite astounding, which is that one company had dramatically better performance in every possible measure. Not just better 20% in this and maybe not so much better in that. In every measure, it was dramatically better. Then they looked and realized that the way that company worked was radically different than all the other companies. So putting that together, they thought they established some cause and effect. This company had found a different way of organizing itself, of working on the, as, as a large organization. You know, I think many of us would like to think we can be effective as individuals and sometimes as small groups. But when we work in large organizations, it's like the organization conspires to make us do crazy things. We make decisions that we know that we really didn't make sense that we would not do on our own. And how we can actually function naturally 
as a natural organization, making decisions that natural people would make, even in this large organizational context, turns out to be one of the keys that they identified. And so they, ident they decided to call it lean thinking. Um, they were essentially talking about the Toyota production management system. Um, they didn't call it that in the book because they had many sponsors uh, for the study. And so they, they didn't refer to Toyota because many of the sponsors were, for example, Volkswagen and General Motors and different companies that did not want that to happen. <laughs> but what they had identified was the Toyota production system and the Toyota management system. But the word lean in English, it rhymes with another English word called mean because it indicates it has this sense of cost cutting, getting smaller, uh, perhaps firing people, just doing, making people work harder. It has that nuance. And that's not what we mean by this at all. It's actually a different way of thinking, a different way of approaching work. We all go to work every day. We spend more time at work usually than we do at, at home with our families. So how we can bring a natural way of thinking into our work so that it becomes more effective and efficient is important to all of us. So rather than just cutting cost, it's properly understood as a way of thinking, a way of approaching any task. It's Everyone in the organization, if we all work together in a company here, we have 100 and some odd people here today, then we'd want everyone equally engaged. Not just some improvers, not just the experts, not just the bosses, but everyone equally engaged. That's our intent. That's our aspiration. We don't always achieve that every day, but that's the aspiration. And we want to do everything we can to achieve that. And what we're going to try to do is get everyone involved in, in solving problems, solving problems that get in the way from us achieving our aims, which are to provide customers what they want when they want it, when, with minimum waste of any kind. So we think a lot about the way things are done, how work takes place. We like to go observe the work, the same way a good coach observes an athlete. We like to observe the work and watch it and see, see, see what the work is doing to the person in addition to what the person is doing to accomplish the work. And try to eliminate everything that gets in the way, all the waste that gets in the way. And uh, through doing that, we hope to make the work better, and we engage the person in their entire body and mind. That's what we want to do. That's what our aspiration is. So this shows uh, those first two very influential books. One is The Machine That Changed the World, a big grandiose title, uh, because it was introducing something that was very important. It was chosen, I think, as one of the top uh, business books of the 20th century in English. I think it was never translated into uh, Hungarian. Uh, Lean Thinking, then, is the book that, that uh, Dr. Womack and Professor Jones wrote uh, in the mid-1990s, and that's what launched this movement. Uh, shortly after this book, they created the, began creating the institutes and developing different ways that people could learn to bring these methodologies into their own lives and their own companies. But here's something that we can identify uh, now that we're starting here in 2012. Uh, this way of working it was basically innovated. The invention kind of took place over a, a period of time from about the mid-1930s to the mid-1970s. So a whole series of experiments conducted in an interesting place called Toyota City, Japan. Uh, I had the opportunity, opportunity to work there uh, starting in the early 1980s when as a, a youngish uh, American I went off to work for the biggest most Japanese company I could find and I landed in Toyota I was the only American, the only non-Japanese there. Uh, it was me and 70,000 Japanese <laughs> trying to figure out how to transfer their production and management system overseas. They had never done that before. So that began a journey for me about 30 years ago that now it's wonderful to be able to share with others. So I went there around the same time with admissions here, the global discovery period from the mid-1970s. I actually first went over there in 1977 myself. And that's when slowly, slowly, the news about this way of working began to kind of seep out into the outside world. But what happened then, after the book, The Machine That Changed the World, many people read about that, learned about that, and focused only on the tools. For example, the piece of paper. For example, some other of the tools we may talk about today. And the tools are wonderful, they're important, they can deliver some wonderful benefits. What's really important is what underlies those which is a way of thinking about work. It is a management system and a total enterprise transformation that becomes uh, necessary to make the tools really work. The tools only work with the context of having the enterprise transformation. And here's what we've learned, it's what I've learned personally and all the different institutes together, um, which is that 
And this is experiential. One of the, one of the, we, as lean thinkers, we are empiricist. We, we only believe something if we've seen it. Uh, not, not just theory and not just, uh, not just data. We want to actually observe and see how things really work. And what we found is, uh, we didn't know this in the beginning. I didn't. I learned this in a car factory, uh, actually building cars. I had to get in and out of a Corolla 500 times a day, learning how to do this. Um, since then, we've learned that it'll work in any industry, not just cars, any kind of manufacturing. It's gone now into process industries, such as, uh, such as uh, processing industries, such as aluminum, steel. Uh, it's also gone then into things like uh, healthcare, which in the beginning we never would have thought would actually uh, work in healthcare, but it works in healthcare beautifully. And it works in service industries. And I think that's going to be the next frontier, is we're going to see an explosion of this in service industries as well. Uh, any location, we've seen it work around the world. Uh, we just saw the 18 institutes. Uh, there are many other countries which, uh, the, that I visit where I see this working. Um, and the location doesn't matter, but the culture might. And people have a lot of cultural questions sometimes. What we're interested in is, in is corporate culture. But what we found is the national culture really doesn't matter. Yes, there's a difference, I'm sure, between the Hungarian culture and Brazilian culture. And so there are some tweaks that have to occur, some, some small adjustments. But for the most part, this way of working is very natural for humans, as humans undertake any endeavor. So what we found is that it will work in any culture. I still have an open mind. Perhaps we'll still find one culture where it doesn't work, but I don't believe so. I think human culture makes this a natural way of working. So we like to think of organizations in this way. Every organization has a purpose. Every organization has processes, the, techni the technical things they do, and it has people. We believe that it's aligning the purpose, the process, and people is the task of management. And moving to achieve that, making progress in that regard, that's what lean thinking is all about. The purpose, we believe, is to provide value to customers. How, what is the value? How can we just provide that? Then we want to align our processes through value streams, and we'll talk about how to do that later today. And then engaging the people to solve problems, things that get in our way, so we can accomplish that. And we'll talk about that later today as well. What we'd like to have is an organization that looked kind of like this, where everything is in perfect balance. Everything's in perfect balance. We have our people working together with the processes, the tools that they have. You know, probably no, no organization ever gets this perfectly in balance all the time, but that's the effort. And on a good day, a good lean organization will indeed have these in harmony. So the people and the processes are working together. And that is our job then is management. And I'm calling all of us here managers and leaders to ensure that that happens. And then that has to be based on the purpose of the organization. What is our purpose for being here? As an organization, are we trying to keep the organization going? Do we create it so we can make money? Or are we gaining money so we can actually make the organization thrive? So we can engage people in human, human endeavor that both makes them fulfill the individuals and provides value for, for society and people. Those are the objectives we have. They're very grand, but we've seen them work uh, time and again in different organizations. And look forward to being able to share more of that with you here today, uh, but also beyond today uh, to the years ahead as well. So I think that's my brief introduction this morning, and now I'd like to turn it back over to our host for the next speaker. Yeah, thank you. Nagyon szépen köszönjük, azért láttam, hogy megpiszkáltam sokor fantáziát ezzel az A3-as kifejezéssel, úgyhogy ez engem izgat, mert akkor a délután folyamán majd ő is sokat fog erről mesélni.